So I am recording. I am now going to go ahead and oh, let's see. I hit record and share my screen. Would hate to go through this whole class and have you not see what it is I am talking about. So there we go. So if you are here, you are looking to learn about how you can write and leverage your story so that it attracts a tribe of prospects, clients, and loyal brand advocates. Basically, you wanna build your business by leveraging your story. But unfortunately, since the crash of 2008, the old way of who we do business with and who we work for has really fundamentally shifted. The loyalty that used to come from a single employer or career is not, it's not there anymore. So people no longer stand for their company because they're afraid that their company is no longer going to stand for them. So now more than ever before, people are jumping in onto the entrepreneurial bandwagon so that they can create a thriving business and really make a big difference in the world. So it's safe to be safe um, and indeed prosper in this economy. What you do and who you are need to become the main focus. It's just like what Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn said, it's time to begin the startup of you. So to do this, what you need to do is you need to market yourself, whether you like it or not. You need to do whatever it takes to be seen and to be heard. According to Bloomberg, eight out of 10 entrepreneurs who start a business fail within the first 18 months. That's a whole whopping 80%. They crash and they burn. So the most effective way of avoiding these heartbreaking results is to stack the deck in your favor and to take every opportunity to tell your story. Just like Rachel Hollis has done to become everybody's favorite female entrepreneur. You need to do the exact same thing as Rachel. So if you're here, you are either a coach, a speaker, an industry expert, or you're an aspiring coach, speaker, or industry expert. You're looking to build your tribe because we don't want to be chasing down clients. We, want, we don't want to be a hunter. Um, we want to be a harvester. And so we want to have our clients want to follow us. We want to have interested prospects, we want engaged clients, and we wanna have loyal brand advocates. Those are clients that want to spread the, the word and the news about your business. And my MO is to help people with their signature series, more specifically their signature brand, their signature book, their signature speech, and their signature support, which would be your coaching business, your speaking business, um, putting everything together to have a course or a membership site, but taking your wisdom and your uh, story, which is your mastery and your message, and put it together in a way that's gonna help you build a very profitable business. And what we're gonna be doing specifically today is focusing on your signature story. So in this class today, like I said before, it's gonna be a no fluff, no sales gimmicky class, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to gain clarity about your stories using your expert topic, and finding out your ideal audience, really determining your value. We're also gonna help you or talk about how you identify the one story that will make the biggest impact in your business and in your life. And then we're going to determine 
what is the best content structure for your story and your teachings. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn, I'm going to teach you how to deliver your valuable wisdom points in your specific area of expertise, how to write your story so that it helps others and helps them make a big shift or a transformation. And finally, how you can leverage your story so that it helps others and increases your revenue. So I'm inviting you to enter my story kingdom. Do you wanna join me? So if any of those things were you, then let's move ahead. So the first thing we're gonna start off with, and I know what I find and what I've experienced is a ton of people do these free master classes and they spent the whole time talking about why and selling. And that's not what I'm gonna do. Um, we need to talk about your why because that is the foundation of why you should do this with your story. But the bottom line is, I'm only gonna be focusing on about 20% of the why and 80% of the how. Because I really want to equip you. I really want you to leave this training knowing exactly what you need to do and how to do it so then I can help you in other ways. But this is training that I'm sharing over and over and over again. And this is very simple thing, stuff. Um, this is about how to build those uh, foundational elements. And of course, you know, I do work with my clients to get very specific on specific strategy, especially with your harmonized business model. But the bottom line is all of this training is stuff that you can learn on your own and then go to that next level with more personalized support with me or somebody else. So um, we're going to focus on a little bit of the why, but mostly the how. So let's get started, bottom line, with the story and the most powerful words in the human language and things that we learned back in our childhood is once upon a time. Now, even before we even knew what Walt Disney World was and the, the beloved Disney mouse, Mickey Mouse, um, we were read, hopefully read stories by our parents. And so that story time is very, very, uh, a very critical part of our uh, persona, who we are. And then once we got a little bit older and we entered into that, or at least the, the United States area, we entered into this whole Disney culture where it all became about the story. But we did learn um, how valuable stories were at a very young age, and we recognize how powerful they can be. So in addition to stories, we also have parables. And a parable is really coined um, based off of Jesus' teachings. And people think that parables are stories um, but they're not, they're different. And when Jesus told a parable, what he did is he didn't tell his parables to speak to the masses. He told a parable to speak to the few. Um, because when you share a story, it's, it's pretty evident as far as what the message is of that story. But parables tend to be very uh, elusive um, and they tend to speak only to a specific niche audience that understands that language. Um, so we're not going to get into the parables, but parables, I want you to know that how different they are. Um, and I also want to share one of my favorite parables, which is the go-giver. Um, it is a story about one man's journey to learn how important it is to network the right way through relationship building. And so the whole story isn't talking about what you have to do. It's basically an elusive message to get you to understand what you have to do based on this man's journey. So it's not what we're going to be doing today because we want to be very upfront and forward with our story, but I wanted to kind of share the difference between a story and a parable uh, based on um, history and uh, what honestly they actually are. So let's talk about why stories are so important and they really, really are. So Robert McKee, he's an author and a lecturer and a story consultant. He's widely known for his teaching and he has a very popular story seminar that he developed 
when he was a professor at the University of Southern California many years ago. He is also like a sought after, I believe, producer or um, I don't know, he's something in the movie world where he has just helped and produced so many different types of um, storylines. So he's really a expert in the industry and a uh, influencer in this niche, niche. So he, his quote is stories are the creative conversation of life itself into a more powerful, clearer, more meaningful experience. They are the currency of human contact. And that is so true. Okay, so why are stories so important? So basically it's about the connection. We see stories or stories are the connective tissue to, between you and your prospect or your client. Stories illustrate your humanity. You can share your vulnerability and you can be relatable with your stories. And more importantly, stories create that connection that creates an immediate partnership with trust and intimacy. So I'm gonna share a story about this couple. And this is about the Gates story. And you, we all know about these, this famous couple, um, but what they have done a great job of is sharing the story of their philanthropy efforts so then people can relate to them better. If you knew how wealthy they were and you knew what they did to build their, you know, mega empire, we're not, we can't really relate to them because they're kind of in a different league and they're just in an area that we just quite don't connect with. But when we learn about how generous they are and how they've made it a mission to help children and people in impoverished countries, and they've just done so much to really connect with humanity, it really brings them down to our level. And so um, I know I actually saw is it Belinda, Melinda Gates uh, a couple of years ago at a leadership summit, and it was just incredible. All of the things that that foundation does to really help people. And what they've done is they've leveraged their influence in the, um, uh, with famous people and famous people that have a ton of money. And they've been able to not only use their resources, but collect a bunch of people that have a ton of resources as well. And so it becomes this humongous pool of money. So bottom line is the gates themselves are pretty unrelatable, but when they start sharing their story and you start learning about them, who they are as a person or as people, it makes them much more relatable. Okay. So let's go into the next reason why stories are so important. It really helps people retain information or knowledge. The brain, unfortunately, doesn't pay attention to boring things, or maybe fortunately, I should say, because I know when I am listening to something boring, that's the first thing I want to do is forget it. I don't want to have to relive that, that painful experience. Um, but there is a a piece of our brain that creates dopamine when things happen that are exciting. And so the brain learns from stories and visual cues, so we need to do the best we can to engage our brain in that way. Because when the dopamine is released, it aids in memory, information processing, and retention. So it's really important that we utilize stories with um, things that we share um, because it really helps us retain. And then the, the following, the, or the final reason is because we've kind of gotten out of this uh, culture of information. We don't want knowledge. We don't want, I mean, we want knowledge and we want to learn, but it, there's so much of it out there. It, we've kind of become numb to it. 
And so we've kind of shifted as a, as a culture to want more infotainment, which means we want to be entertained while you learn, while we learn, so we can remain engaged. So I've got a great little story about this. Um, and everybody knows that one of the most popular parts of the Super Bowl are the commercials. And so what happens is that our brain doesn't pay attention to boring things, like I, say, like I said. And so we want to create stories that are memorable. So this specific commercial creates a story between Carrie Bradshaw, who is Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker, and we know Carrie is famous for her Cosmos in Sex and the City. And then we've got um, Jeff Bridges, who is famous for his white Russians. And so this whole engagement between Jeff and um, Sarah Jessica uh, Parker is about them putting aside their favorite drinks for a Stella. And of course, Jeff has a Stella in a bottle and Carrie, I keep saying Carrie, um, Sarah has hers in a Stella glass. And I guess I, I don't drink beer, I definitely don't drink Stellas, but people that do drink Stellas or like my girlfriends that drink Stellas say it's just not the same without a Stella glass. Um, so there's something important to that. But this is from all of this, the commercials that are played at Super Bowl. Um, this is one of the most popular is because it creates the story between these two characters about their journey to let go of their favorite drinks and and uh, gravitate towards these Stella drinks. So I thought that was kind of cool. So, all right, commercials. So let's go on to the next reason why stories are so important. And it is about the fact that you become magnetic by sharing your stories. It humanizes your brand. Others want to connect with you Others want to follow you, and isn't that what we want? We want a bunch of followers that will want to work with us. Others will also want to emulate what you do. That way you can teach them. You have great information, um, and then you will be able to make a ton more money when you are able to leverage your story correctly. So let me share you a little, a little bit about my story. Or actually, I'm going to share you a story with share a story with you about this invisible little girl. So this girl grew up at times wanting to be invisible. She had big dreams, always finding creative ways to make money with what they now call micro businesses. She didn't know it at the time, but her introverted and painfully shy personality set her on a cycle of making decisions that would sabotage her happiness in an effort to remain comfortable, hidden, and safe. And that little girl is me. I know I gave it away. Um, and when I started my business 13 years ago, and believe it or not, um, I did things before then, but my current era of my life, um, the business as a grown up in the grown up world, um, only started 13 years ago. And I never imagined at that point in my wildest dreams that I would eventually build this successful business as a networking and storytelling expert, but I did. And not because I cho chose to, however, but because I had to. And I honestly urge you to not wait until the life around you forces you to step out into your own greatness. I, own, I urge you to take ownership of your life and I urge you to make your own choice you were born to be you, so be you already. And don't be afraid to be the hero in your own journey. Now, I'm not gonna get into the reason why I had to make a shift. Um, bottom line, I had a divorce. I was building a thriving business with my husband before then, but after the divorce, I had to get out and make my own way. I had to get a job. Um, I had experience, but I didn't have a resume. And so finding a job was difficult. And to top it all off, I had to also support my family or my children on my own, which made it even more difficult, but it all worked out. Um, so I started that journey back in 2003 and I was forced to break out of my shell and network 
to get clients for my new job in the mortgage industry. It was a rocky journey, but one that I believe I was designed to take. I learned firsthand how fruitless and draining it was to network ineffectively, so I created a system that would help me be more successful. And better yet, those same systems eventually helped others succeed in DPWN, which is my organization, the Dynamic Professional Women's Network. And that's what I've been building for these past 13 years. And it's an amazing organization where women want to support each other and they want to be loyal and uh, create opportunities for each other. And over the years, we've had a, a ton of events and done amazing, great things. And I'm only sharing this with you because I want to know a little bit about, want you to know a little bit about who I am and why I am an authority in this area. And yes, I've been building a strong community. I know what people need to do to create a tribe and to create a following. But during that journey, I learned how important it is to share your story. And I was invited to share my story in a book. And it was so successful for me as an entrepreneur and for my business that I created a similar opportunity like that for my community. And that's when we started our Overcoming Mediocrity series of books. Since then, we've gone on to help other people uh, write books, have their own books, create their own anthology books. Um, there's just so many things that we have done. And that is why I have positioned myself in this way to kind of leverage my time and help more people write their stories, share their stories, leverage their stories, and I wanna help you as well. So this is my recent book that I'm actually re-releasing. It was out in 2015 and I'm releasing it again um, very shortly, but it is all about building your tribe. This is not about storytelling, it's about relationship networking. So stay tuned for details on that very shortly, but what are we gonna to do today? Um, Basically why your story is so important is because you need to be the overcomer and not be afraid to be the hero of your own story. You need to be the empowerer because it's okay to humbly share pieces of yourself through your stories of success. And you need to be the motivator because when you motivate others, they will more likely take action on the message you're sharing. All right, so why is your story so important? Yours specifically. Because your story is unique and it will help you build a very strong, incredible, and profitable brand. Your story will be support for others because you've made it a mission to help them. And I am going to share a little bit about the starfish story because I love to share this story with my um, uh, with my leadership team. And what I do is talk about the um, a little old man that's walking down the beach and sees a bunch of starfish, and he is he just starts picking them up and throws them into the ocean. But then this young woman walks down the beach and sees miles and miles of beach and you know hundreds of starfish and he, he's, she sees this little old man bending down, picking up starfish and throwing them back into the ocean and she just, she's kind of in, a, in awe because there's so many starfish and she doesn't see how this one person could make any difference. So what she does is she walks up to this little old man and she asks him, why, why on earth would you be spending your time picking up all of these fish? You can't possibly get them all. There's too many and you can't really make a difference. So why bother? And so what happens is that little man or that old man uh, picks up one more starfish and he very carefully throws it back into the ocean. And he looks at that lady in the eye and says, young lady, I know I can't help them all, but I can help that one. So that's why I really want to encourage you to share your story because 
You may think your story is not that special. You may think it's not that important or impactful, but I will tell you it is. There is somebody out there waiting to hear the message that you have to share. You were designed and you were built, and I believe God created every one of us to share a particular story. And that being said, I also believe that God has other people out there that are waiting to hear your story, so you need to share it. So hopefully you haven't heard that starfish story before, if you, or if you did, uh, I hope that you really found it to be enjoyable again, because I love that story. So why am I sharing this information with you? Because, you know, why? I don't really need to be doing it, and I don't need to be doing it for free. But the bottom line is I want to help my clients network more effectively. And as I said, I have a huge uh, community of women building their businesses. And one of the elements that is really critical for their success is to deliver a very powerful elevator pitch or infomercial. And when you can do that by incorporating your story, it is so much more effective. You also, I also want to help my clients clarify their business focus because when you spend time going through these exercises uh, that I do with my clients to help them really determine their ideal client, their, their mastery, what they're really good at, their niche, um, you know, how, what their message is, like going through that whole process helps them really narrow in and clarify their business focus, which makes them be more impactful. I want to help my clients add profit centers to their business, and that is all about their um, harmonized business plan. Because when you put your story all together with all of the other, other elements of your business, it can create a really profitable business center with multiple streams of revenue. I want to also help my clients write a more effective story. And, oh, did I miss one? Oh, geez. Sorry, there we go. Nope, help my clients write a more effective story. So that's it. And then finally, um, having your story can be your ultimate marketing tool that will create more visibility, credibility, and notoriety for you and your business. It will also be the foundation of your brand. Your brand. And like I said before, Having your harmonized business model in place, this is basically your business model that puts all of the elements together with your marketing and all of your, your um, offerings and your message and all of the pieces. It really all goes together so you've got a very strategic plan. Um, I used to do business plans. Now I do, now I do harmonized business models and I find them to be so super effective and they work great with my clients. So this is going to help with that. And then how can you use your story? So you've got your signature message kind of figured out. What can you do with your story? So it's all about creating a whole series of content around your story or your message, which would be your signature brand. You could use your story for your bio, your website about page, your social media personality, profiles, your email signature, all of the, the different pieces. You want to make sure they're all cohesive. Then you're going to have your signature book. You can have your own book. You can have a chapter in a book. Maybe you don't want to do a full book, but you can do a small little business card book or a series of them. I know I've already started on my series of business card books, and it is very helpful for me when I have clients because I will go to Amazon and go ahead and order the book for them and now they've got some steps that I can provide them. Then you have your signature speech or your signature talk and your signature support, which as I mentioned earlier is your coaching packages, your courses, your trainings, your membership site, all of the different other profit centers that you can create in your business around the support you can offer your clients. And this is one of my success stories. This is Shannon. So Shannon's story is incredible. Um, I met her a couple of years ago and she ended up by sharing her story in our Influential Women book, which is our sixth book in the Overcoming Mediocrity series of books. Um, she went on to write her own book, actually, like right after she submitted her story to me, 
and she did such a great job and we helped her put everything together so that she was able to debut this book just weeks after our Overcoming Mediocrity book. And it was an amazing experience for her. Since then, she has amazing experience for us too, working with Shannon, she is delightful. And then she's gone on to do speaking and she was in this magazine. She has really done a lot to build a very strong and successful brand. And I'm excited now to share that she has just become the director of engagement at Go Givers International. So she works directly with Bob Berg and Kathy Zader to uh, really, um, oh, sorry, Kathy Tanginell, to, uh, to really, she's positioned herself really, really well. And she's a Go Giver uh, ambassador. Um, so she has done an amazing job of leveraging her her story, her, her teachings, all of her expertise, so she can really get out there and make a bigger impact. So what is stopping you from leveraging your story? It could be time, it could be money, it's maybe knowledge, you just, I'm not sure what are the steps you need to take, or you're not sure how to do it the right way. And finally, maybe you just need a little bit of accountability, but either way, I wanna help you put your story together and your book together. So let's get into the, the pieces of what you need to do and a few more whys. So why is this course specifically going to help you? Um, bottom line is when God provides you the right people, the right resources, wisdom, and opportunities, I urge you to pay attention. I don't want you to wait for the results to drop in your lap. Don't guess your way through it. You need to find experts who've already done what you do and you need to pay them to get expedited results. We don't want you to try to build your business alone. You should unite with other like-minded people to accomplish greater things faster and with less effort. And you need to save the one-on-one -on -one support for your high-end clients. So this is about shifting your business model. And as I mentioned before, your harmonized business model is really a way to restructure your business because when you have a new business, yes, you're going to have to do one-on-one -on -one work because that's how you're going to really refine uh, your area of expertise and just clarify who your ideal clients are. But eventually, those one-on-one -on -one relationships should be for your high-end clients, the people that are paying you a lot of money. And so all of the other things should be put together in programs and courses so you can maximize your time and expand your reach and increase your profits. That is super critical. And then finally, you don't want to share your story and have your readers feel like they're wasted their time and their valuable money on you. More importantly, their money and valuable time. So we want to make sure you do it the right way. So how do we do it the right way? We're going to take your mastery and your message and we're going to help you make a bigger impact and make more money. So step one, we're getting into the house. Okay, so step one is putting together your dreams and your destiny. What, is, what were you born to do? What did you dream about doing when you were a kid? So we have to first start by getting a journal. You need to get something to write in. You can get a three ring binder. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do, but unless you're really person that hates using paper and you're completely paperless, journaling works better because it does engage your creative brain with your, with your actual writing. Um, now, you're not going to do your whole book or your whole, all of it in there, but for the brainstorm and the creative uh, idea piece of it, it's good to have something to write on. So I really recommend you having a journal and I recommend you having one that's specifically for your story. So go ahead and get a journal. Then you need to get someplace comfortable, quiet, be all alone, someplace different that you're not used to being in. Just you've got to get yourself in a different environment so you can kind of get out of your normal behavior and routines. Then you're going to get a crayon or a marker. Like I love Crayola markers. I've got a whole bunch of them here. I use them all the time. But you want to get a uh, something, Crayola, um, and you're going to want to start journaling with your left hand. And I know it's not going to be very legible. I know it's not. But what this does is it engages the creative side of your brain, the right side of your brain, 
to allow those ideas to just develop better. So you're going to want to journal about your childhood dreams. You really want to spend time kind of putting all that down into paper. What did you want to do when you grew up? And what did you enjoy the most? What are the things that you wanted to do when you got older? Then you're gonna to wanna to make a list with your right hand about your current business dreams, all of the wishes, all of the desires, all of the big goals that you wanna create with your business. The sky is the limit. And honestly, I actually have been doing this amazing book. Um, I don't have it in front of me. I'm not gonna be able to tell you what it's called. Um, but it is about creating a goal document, a working document, and I actually created a goal document on my website, christyrubino.com forward slash goals. So you can take a look at that. And that is going to be my working document that is going to define all of my goals. Um, and that is something that you should do. You should have something that you keep track of. I've actually had a Microsoft Word document for years that I have specifically made all my, um, my big, hairy, audacious goals in. And of course, we know our goals have to be smart goals. Um, but the bottom line is you want to, with your right hand, put all of those down. And then you want to write down what you like to do in your business, what you're good at, and what are your superpowers. You really need to get really clear on, on all of this. Your dreams and your destiny. And then what are you the queen of? And I like to work with my clients and just get them to uh, get very niche with their business and really kind of label themselves as being queen of X. So what would that be? Now, of course, this is not something you're sharing with anybody. This is just something that you use to keep yourself grounded. And you, the more niche you get, the more you become seen as a expert. You don't want to be a generalist. You want to be a specialist because generalists have a harder time finding clients because clients don't search them out, but clients search out specialists and clients will pay specialists more than other people because they know that those people have a specific niche. So I, it's hard. I mean, it's even hard for me. So it's very easy for me to help my clients get nichier, but it's hard for me to get nichier with my area of expertise. And so that's where I work with a coach. I have accountability partners that keep me grounded in that area. But you really need to get as niche as possible and not be afraid that other people aren't going to find you or not be afraid that you can't work with other people because you can. Just because you have a certain niche doesn't mean you can't work with people that are out of your niche because they're going to still find you. But the nichier you get, the more people are going to actually be searching for you. So then once you figure that out, you want to pick out which one of those things in all of your list you want to become your current signature message or your topic. Now, when we're trying to figure out what our signature story is and our signature book and our signature talk, I don't want you to think that you only have to have one forever and you've got to stay with it. Um, you don't because there are experts out there that have, you know, four or five signature talks and they could put together four or five signature books or more, but you've got to start with one. And if you can't define all of your areas that you want to focus on and if and then if you can't choose one, you're gonna keep hopping around to all of them and you're never gonna make anything happen. So I like people to go through, the, through this ex exercise so they can define all of the areas that they feel that they can add value in because that way they can like prioritize them and say, okay, these are my five areas, but this is the first one. And when this is done, I'm gonna work on the second one. And then I'm going to work on the third one. And during the time that you're working on your first one, you can still do research. And if things cross your brain or cross your eyeballs or cross your life that you feel can go into the other topics, add those pieces to your 
your file system, however you're putting that together, whatever swipe file you've created for them. Um, but you've got to get them segmented and you've got to define what is your current focus and then you need to roll with it and just stay, say, I'm going to be committed to this for at least six months until I'm done, if not a year, but you've got to be committed until you get that one area done. So I'm going to share a story and this is Emily Blunt. And honestly, this is a great story about your, her dreams and her destiny because when she was a child, she had a terrible stutter. So you know her right now. She is a leading actress and she is a stage performer and a screen performer. But when she was 14, she could barely talk with her classmates. And so she told W Magazine that she was a smart kid and she had a lot to say, but she just couldn't say it. So everything changed for her when a junior high teacher encouraged her to try out for the school play. She really wanted to do it, but she couldn't. She couldn't get those words out. So this teacher helped her really de determine strategies. And she, try, she suggested that Emily try different accents and character voices. So it would help her focus not on the words, but on the strategies about getting the words on and it helped her overcome her stuttering. So by the end of her teens, she had completely overcome that hurdle and she went on to create a successful uh, career, which we know her now. So think about that. Think about the fact that she had this great dream and that was her story and her story led with her great dream and then it went to her defining moment where she had to make a decision on if she wanted to pursue this acting career or not. And her defining moment was that moment when she had to make that decision on what she needed to do to overcome that, that fear. So that was an amazing story about Emily and her pursuing her dreams of becoming an actress. So step two of this process is now you've got to define your defining moment, right? What is the big transformation you made and what prompted you to make that transformation? What were you so crazy about before then? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at your list of interesting life topics. And this is one of the areas that I feel uh, the women that I talk to have the hardest time because they come to me with a specific story and they had something happen to them that was so traumatic and you know it was earth shattering for them and they wanted to share it but it really didn't have anything to do with their business but yet they wanted to use it for their business so there's like disconnect there um, no there's nothing wrong with sharing your story if you're doing it to leave a legacy or or you're leaving you know sharing your story just to teach something but if you want to leverage it for your business and you want to use it to build your expert platform, you need to find out which story is going to be wrapped around that niche. So you need to make a list of your interesting topics, write them all down. Um, and then that's like, just like with your, um, the, 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 um, uh, the niches before, when we talked about your areas of focus, um, this is going to help you getting a lot of your head. So you, you make a list of all of your life stories whether they're good or bad, you're going to determine what story relates directly to your niche. So you may need somebody else to help you. And I honestly wouldn't say may, you will need somebody else to help you because it's really hard for us to see our own stuff from an outside perspective. And that's what we have to do because we're not sharing our story for ourselves. We're sharing our story for them, for the reader, for the audience, for whoever it is that we want to read or listen to our story. So you want to make sure that you get that all figured out. What was your life like before that specific event? What was that specific defining moment? And what were things like after? I don't know, that didn't even make sense. What were things like after, not life? In other words, what, were, what was everything like after that? So this is really what you want to do when you put your story together. But right now we're still in the brainstorming mode. So just go ahead and keep writing. And I'm going to share another story about somebody's defining moment. And you may know who this is. This is Colonel Sanders. And what you may not know about Colonel Sanders is that 
He didn't even discover his secret recipe for fried chicken until he was 40 years old. Um, that was during the Great Depression, and he um, had a gas station. It didn't necessarily have a restaurant, but he wanted to share his fried chicken recipe. So what he did is he actually created this little restaurant in his home and served people from his private living quarters. So over the next 10 years, he perfected his secret recipe and it became very, very popular. But what happened is um, in the 1950s, uh, the, t the state of Kentucky took the road that his gas station was on and it diverted it. So basically it took all of his traffic and sent everybody a different way. So he had this great business, this great recipe that he perfected, but now he had no customers. So that was the defining moment where he had to figure out what he needed to do. So he basically figured that, oh my gosh, I have no idea how to make this happen. But what he did is he pushed aside his overwhelm and he went around to local restaurants and asked them if he could sell his chicken at their restaurants for a profit. He basically um, wanted a nickel for each piece of chicken that was sold. So he, by basically he shared the secret recipe. So he would share the recipe, they would make the chicken and he would get a nickel per, per chicken leg or per chicken whatever, chicken piece. So he was essentially rejected by a thousand different restaurants before he finally found his partner. And now you know him as uh, Colonel Sanders, which is uh, very well known everywhere. And this is an amazing picture I wanna share. This is my friend and he looks just like Colonel Sanders, lost a few pounds, a skinny Colonel Sanders, um, but he is a part of our writing community and we love Michael. So I just wanted to share that. So the first two steps that I shared are steps that everybody seems to know. It's how do you figure out your story? How do you figure out your defining moment, your dreams, your destiny, and what really made that change? Um, but what we're missing, what people tend to miss are the next three steps. And so that's what we're going to get into is what are the next three steps? And that is step number three. What is your mission, vision, and hope? Where are you headed? So you are tasked with the duty of casting a vision of what your reader can have. And it doesn't have to be really long. You don't have to go into a ton of content about this, but you want people to realize that they can have what you have, or they can achieve the same thing you achieve. You want to put them in your footprints or in your shoes. So basically you have to identify what is their pain, you can cast a vision of how they can have what you have and they can get out of their pain. You're going to make it a mission to help them do something specific. And you're going to give them hope that they can have that transformation or that positive outcome. So this is a piece of one of the critical pieces that people tend to forget when they're sharing their story. And my... <laughs> my mission or vision, um, just really quickly, this is, I guess, my story that I threw in here about how my vision is to help 100 women become uh, published authors or, or Amazon best-selling authors. And, um, you know, I've helped a ton of women already, but my mission is to help 100 women this year get on that path. And maybe they won't be finished by the end of the year, but they're going to be on that path to accomplish that. So step four is figuring out your proprietary system. This is about your harmonized business model and what falls under that umbrella. So it's really to be able to help the reader or the audience know what they actually need to do. What you're doing is you're giving them something to equip them to get the results that you promise. So what does that look like? So you're going to create some unique teaching points. The length of that determines the quantity that you provide. You can either give three tips or five tips or five steps or five lessons or seven lessons, but basically you're going to break it down, your teaching points into little sections. 
you can give them all of the tips you can give them little bits of the tips or you can deep dive into one but you've got to identify all of the different areas that you can help people maybe you've got 20 like maybe you say you determine your niche and then you determine you've got you know 20 steps to put those things in place honestly so i created my um uh i just did my first class a couple months ago well we just finished it a couple months ago for our profitable book incubator to help women or help people honestly um, be able to put together their signature business book and it was an eight-week course um, but once i got through with the eight-week course i realized that it's more content that can be kind of gone through just eight sessions so i broke it down into multiple modules so I'm still putting those pieces together or finishing it, I should say. So I'm not sure exactly how many modules. I'll never have a total finish because I'm gonna add elements um, for speaking, bringing in a speaking expert and bringing in different experts to add more elements. But bottom line is I'm gonna be creating my own kind of path with these specific steps that are very specific to each piece of the puzzle. And so I can do a a course or a training on all of those pieces or I can do a short condensed like I said it depends on the length um, of time that I'm presenting or I can give just three of those tips or I can just do a highlight version of more so you really want to determine the different ways that you can break all your teaching into various segments and here's a great story a great example as I mentioned earlier Bob Berg is the author of the go-giver and what he has done with his whole story is he has broken it down to five specific laws and he's got the law of value the law of compensation the law of influence the law of authenticity and receptivity receptivity so that is a great example of breaking up your learning points into little sections and he has actually defined these different sections as different chapters in his book um, and so that is one example. Another example is like I mentioned earlier, my profitable book incubator. I have it broken down into sections where I'm helping people gain clarity on their book topic, their audience and their value, their value. And those are all different individual modules, um, identifying the framework of your book and the stories and the teaching points, uh, the profit centers for your business and um, your marketing calendar and the self-publishing and on-demand printing. So all of these different pieces are all different areas of focus. And so once you get those all broken down, it's going to be a lot easier for you to put together um, your signature story and your signature message and all of the different um, content pieces for your audience. Because the bottom line is your audience is going to want more from you. You're gonna, they're going to hear you talk and you want them to want more from you they're going to read your story or they're going to hear you talk or they're going to learn about you in some way through your story and they're going to want more of you so you've got to be able to put at the very least your book together so that way they have that information and you can help them in a more um, in-depth way and then finally step five is your invitation basically you want to invite them to come with you you want to not only give them information but you want to invite them to go to that next level with you because people will pay a little bit for information but not a lot because information can be received very free in so many forms um, but what people will pay for is community people will pay for accountability people will pay for support and that is really the only way you're going to help them People don't make transformations with information. They make transformations with support, accountability, and um, uh, community. So how do we do step five? Basically, you create a call to action. You want to create or make ways for them to take a little piece of you home with them in a book, a strategy call, some sort of freemium, which would be a report, a white paper, quiz, something where they are able to um, get something for free and start building that relationship with you. And here is a great story, a great example of a speaker that I met years and years and years ago. And he was, um, well, you know him, John Maxwell. Actually, I didn't put his name on here. Um, most people know who he is, but I saw him speak. He was incredible. I've seen him speak many times since. 
And when that uh, event was done, I wanted more of John. I wanted to learn more. I was building an organization where I needed to develop my leadership skills myself, as well as I needed to help my leaders develop their leadership skills. So what I did is I bought every book that he had, and I turned out to be a John Maxwell leadership coach. And it's been an amazing, he's again, a great man, but um, bottom line is he actually had a call to action where everybody in the audience was able to go to that next place and become a better person because of it. So don't feel like you are being selfish uh, with your call to action. You're not, you're being selfish by not giving a call to action um, because you really want to not leave people stranded. You want to help them further on their journey. So here is the bottom line. Here is my personal power story formula. So it's about what is my dream? What was I born to do? Those are my dreams and destiny. We've got your defining moments your mission, vision, and hope, your proprietary system, and then wrap it up with your invitation. But don't go away, I've got more great hows. So now you have all of those elements, and they're all here. There's two ways that you can actually put your story together. Now there's actually more, but two main ways. First would be, would be to begin your story with your defining moment. What is that time or that space or that place that you were at your most critical jun junction where a decision had to be made? Then you're gonna follow it up with your dreams and your destiny because people wanna know the backstory about that defining moment. And then you're gonna get into your mission, vision, hope, steps, systems, and your invitation. So I'm gonna give you a story to demonstrate what this looks like. And you all should know what this is. This is the classic comedy, The Hangover, and when you, if you haven't seen it, um, I, I'm not really a big fan of these slapstick comedies, but this is honestly one of the most funniest movies I've ever seen. I saw the, I saw them all, but the first one, this is the first one, and it was crazy funny, and the whole, that whole first scene was this hotel room, and these men and everything that, and chicken and everything that was in the room. It was basically the defining moment that set the tone for the rest of the movie. And then after that, it went into the backstory and, and went into more of the elements. Now, of course, they weren't sharing their story to build a business, but this is just a great example of how they began the story with the, um, with the defining moment. So, the next opportunity is to um, go past beginning with a defining moment and now let's start your story with your dreams and destiny and then move on to the de defining moment and then wrap it up with your business building steps so i'm going to give you an example of that so remember when i shared the story of the little girl which was me I didn't start with the defining moment. I started with my dreams and destinies. I started with the fact that I wanted to um, uh, make a difference. I wanted to break out of my shell. I wanted to, you know, get out of, um, I, I was introverted. I was shy. I was painfully shy. And it took later in years that defining moment for me to change. But up until that point, I really wanted to help people, but I was just so afraid to do that. So those are the two kind of structures that you can use that are the most popular, um, either starting with your mission vision or start with your defining moment. And so a few more tips. Um, so when you start putting your story together, whether it's in a book or whatever you're using it for, you want to always determine your why because your why is going to be your motivator. It's going to keep you going. It's going to give you uh, the, the mission and the drive to uh, accomplish your goal on your deadline. Then you're going to de determine your theme, and that is everything we just spoke about. Then you're going to determine your deadline. You have to have a deadline because without a deadline, your book may never get done. Your story may never be, be written. But once you've got your theme and your deadline, then you've got to create your outline, put all of those pieces into place, and there's a great simple formula for that. You're gonna then start writing your content, filling in the blanks with stories and uh, just different support information. 
Um, and then you're going to refine your revise your content. So that's the basic element of putting your book together and your story together. And then some tips on how to do it well. First, you're going to write in first person. You're going to be vulnerable so that the reader will connect with you. You're going to keep it positive. Even if your story contains difficult stuff, you can't dwell on the difficult stuff too long. You've got to keep it positive. And you've got to be passionate without creating unnecessary drama. You want to tell your story in a way that will inspire and benefit others. And what advice would you give to a friend? You've got to think about this. So when I work with my clients, uh, whether in individually or in a group, I really, really encourage them to figure out who they're writing this book for, whether it's a friend or an ideal client or a fictitious person, but they need to determine who that is. And they need to really get clear on who that is, give that person, that character, some specific details, uh, who they are, what their pain is, what is your solution, and put that on every piece of your manuscript. Have that be in the header. Um, that keeps you grounded and focused, and as you're writing and you're putting everything together, it really keeps you very clear so your content is always be, being written for that person. You need to have stories within your story, which is critical. You don't want to use big words because they're just not necessary. So I know I'm a little bit over an hour, but the bottom line and to wrap this up is people don't invest in your business or your products or even your service. They invest in you and your story. If you want people to remember what you say, tell a compelling story. So really, honestly, I personally have had eight best-selling books and I've helped over 200 clients become best-selling authors. I love to teach people around the world how to leverage a book and use that content with live and digital courses. And honestly, I would love to be able to help you too. So I would love to invite you to be one of the 100 women that I'm helping become published authors this year. And I don't have any specific author. Um, I do wanna thank you, but below this recording, there are going to be ways for you to connect. Um, I have mentioned various things throughout this training. Uh, I urge you to make you a priority. You know, at the very least, let's book a strategy call. Let's figure out how to make this happen. But I, my goal is to help you to write your story, help you leverage it in a book, whether it's in your own book, whether it's in a compilation book, but some way you need to take that dream of being an author and make it a reality. It's not that hard. We can put this together and honestly, very, very short time and I have a very simple process and a ton of people that can help you through that journey. So click on one of the links below to learn more. I hope to see you soon and feel free to reach out if you have any further questions. But thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.